Hello, my name is Jakub Marszałek and welcome to uh, the webinar, uh, which is devoted to a pathway uh, to a pan-European Union joint open education resource development. In this webinar, we will focus on first on some barriers uh, to be reduced uh, in, in learning opportunities. Uh, then we will focus on some uh, problems related to cost reduction in access to education. Then we will uh, describe some challenges related to technical openness. And uh, in the end, uh, some strategies, technological strategies for open education and resources dissemination will be uh, presented. The summarizing of uh, the webinar uh, is going to be devoted to some open eco um, education resources dissemination examples. What are the major uh, goals for using um, educational resources in, uh, we can say, I don't know, uh, teaching? Uh, well, the, according to OECD uh, documents, uh, we can distinguish uh, six uh, major goals related to this challenge. First is uh, building sustainable partnership we have the access to own teaching um, supported by open educational resources. Then we can conduct research uh, and development. Moreover, uh, open educational resource and own teaching um, may start becoming uh, independent uh, of publishers. They an uh, outreach uh, of uh, disadvantaged uh, communities. Um, the fifth goal is uh, to bring down costs of course uh, development for the institutions. And finally, uh, we expect uh, better access uh, to uh, best possible um, resources. If we look more carefully on um, these goals and how these goals may be uh, reached, well, we first should point uh, some technical um, drivers related to open educational uh, resources development. Well, there's um, quite important that uh, we need to uh, increase uh, broadband availability. Uh, and uh, if uh, it's if it's supported by the what better broadband, uh, and moreover supported by um, uh, bigger hard drive capacity and processing speed, it may um, uh, cause uh, uh, lower cost of access to. Uh, open uh, educational uh, resources. Another driver, which seems to be uh, quite important, uh, uh, is uh, technology uh, helping creation, distribution, and share and sharing the educational content. Um, another thing uh, which uh, cannot be omitted uh, is a provision of. Uh, uh, software tools necessary for creation, addition, and remixing resources. Finally, uh, we uh, have to look at uh, costs that should be uh, decreased and which is decreasing uh, that uh, increase quality of a uh, consumer technology devices for audio, uh, photo, or um, video. Uh, second driver uh, or second group of drivers uh, is uh, are the economic drivers. So uh, if we have this technical support mentioned in the previous slide, we can uh, focus on the lower cost 
of this axis. So it may refer to lower cost of broadband and internet connection, lower cost of uh, um, increased um, availability or better availability uh, for, um, or for of tools for, for creation, editing, and hosting content. And finally, this uh, technical um, uh, growth, this technical um, uh, increasement um, may uh, support lower entry barriers to open educational um, resources. Third uh, area of uh, OER, OER uh, uh, development drivers um, are the legal ones. Um, and uh, it means uh, um, development of uh, such uh, uh, legal elements like Creative Commons or uh, GNU uh, free documentation license and any other support necessary to share the content and distribute it among the, um, the institutions. Fourth group of drivers uh, necessary to be uh, um, presented are the social drivers. So uh, we need some social, some personal uh, support like um, motifs uh, that may be expressed as uh, altruism and non-monetary gains uh, for individuals and opportunities for institutions to reach out the new uh, social groups. Uh, and of course, uh, we need increased use of brand boat, uh, which is uh, well necessary to support our previously mentioned um, uh, drivers. Fifth, the last uh, group of drivers are policy-oriented drivers, and then we uh, can uh, point um, uh, the need to leverage an initial investment of taxpayer money by encouraging free sharing and refusing um, publicity. Um, funded institutions. And of course, um, uh, we need a, a, a little, at least, will to make knowledge available to individuals and institutions that would not otherwise uh, have access. Of course, um, uh, the drivers that uh, were just uh, presented are closely connected to uh, barriers that uh, may appear during using or producing open educational resources. So we may point at uh, technical barriers, which means lack of uh, brand build availability. We can point economic uh, barriers. Um, that means lack of resources to invest in the hardware or software needed to develop or share open economic resources and difficulties for covering the cost of developing educational resource and uh, sustaining an OER project in the long run. Then we can go to social um, barriers, uh, which means absence of skills to use the technical invention mentions as drivers, cultural obstacles against sharing or using resources developed by others. And finally, of course, uh, we have uh, uh, legal barriers. Uh, that means um, prohibition to use copyrighted materials without uh, the consent of the creator. Uh, if we uh, look at the arguments for institutions to engage an open educational resources project, we may uh, say uh, that altruistic argument, argument um, that sharing knowledge is a good thing uh, to do, which is also in uh, line with academic traditions, as pointed out by the open access movement. Institutions should leverage taxpayers' money by allowing free sharing and reuse of resources development by publicity funded institutions. Give uh, what you give, you receive back in proof. This is uh, 
a sentence, which means that by sharing and reusing, the cost for content development can be cut, thereby uh, making better uh, use of available uh, resources. Then uh, institutions involved in open educational resources project is good uh, for the public relations and can serve as a showcase for attracting new students. Many institutions face growing competition as a consequence of uh, the increasing globalization of higher education and rising supply of free educational resources on the internet. In this situation, there is a need to look for new cost uh, recovery model or models new ways of obtaining uh, revenue, such as offering content for free, both as an advertisement for an um, institution. Open sharing will speed up the development of new learning resources, stimulate internal improvement, innovation, and reuse and help the institution to keep good records of materials and the internal and external use. These records can be used as a form of market research if one is interested in the commercial potential um, or individual resources. What kind of um, financing models uh, we can find in open education and resources financing process? Well, generally there are six major solutions. First is uh, the replacement model. So we have uh, open content um, uh, replaced by another model and um, uh, then it can benefit from the cost saving resulting uh, from the replacement. Second solution is a foundation or also called the donation model. So it's uh, financing is provided by the external actor. In the segmentation model, the third solution, um, we have providing resources for free, but also provides value added services to user segments and charges them for such services as sales of paper, copies, training, and user support. Uh, or similar services. In the conversion model, uh, we can say that we give something away for free and then we convert the cons consumer to a paying um, customer. The voluntary support model is based on fundraising campaigns, while the contribution contributor pays model uh, assumes contribu uh, that contributors pay the cost of maintaining the contribution, which is the provider um, uh, makes available for free. How can we reduce cost in open educational resources? Well, there are several solutions. First, of course, we can use already existing resources, so databases or uh, or a similar free uh, data already existing. Then we can uh, switch from paper or hard books into ebooks. Uh, another solution is to adopt open educational resources, which is quite close to the first solution, so use existing free uh, resources. If we try to develop uh, a second solution, so adapting ebooks, we can also create them by digitalization portions of uh, already existing books, existing in the typical physical um, uh, way. Uh, finally, of course, we can create resources by making our own text. Uh, 
paintings, uh, pictures, graphs, and data, everything which may be used for future uh, open education resources usage. What are the major technical limitations in open education resources openness? Well, first is, uh, and in my opinion, the most important thing is the access to editing tools. And this uh, limitation may be taken in two ways. First, it's uh, a time that we have spent on, on, on tools. So it means how simple the tool is, how easily we can learn to use it. Many programs, many softwares uh, um, is simply very difficult to to get through and to use it in practice. So sometimes we decide to leave editing because it's simply too difficult for us. Second problem is the access uh, uh, realized or uh, meant by um, cost of it. If uh, we have good programs, for many of them, uh, we have to pay for it. So without free and easy access to editing tools, uh, we can find a really strict technical limitation to uh, these resources openness. Um, another thing is uh, meaningfully editable, which means uh, the possible access to uh, receivers. So if they can uh, use it, if they can, if they don't have to uh, pay, it, uh, they may simply uh, be uh, uh, blocked to uh, to get this access. And finally, uh, we can uh, look at uh, self-sourced limitation, which means that sometimes we are simply limited by ourselves. To, uh, to share knowledge and share these uh, resources. Um, right now we can uh, point some essential elements of successful implementation of technology used for teaching and learning. And uh, they are as follows. Uh, the technology should be used to engage uh, students learning. The technology should be an integral aspect of teaching. Professional support for technology should be ongoing. Planning, budgeting, and evaluation of technologies should be key organizational activities. And finally, the implementation is supported by collaborative efforts. If we, uh, if you are able to uh, develop open uh, source technologies. We can participate in several benefits like software adoption lifecycle benefits. So we have a development of, uh, um, of these technologies. We know uh, how sensitive they are. So we have some benefits in uh, security and risk control. Moreover, we have a software development methodology benefits, so we know how the communication may be improved. Um, and finally, uh, we can have better contact with other receivers, other um, deliverable uh, units, so it may be expressed as a social benefits of this of this group. What are the examples of nowadays uh, dissemination uh, cases for open educational uh, resources? Generally, we have uh, repositories and aggregators. And in the slide, we see major types of uh, use solution nowadays. So we have um, institutional repositories and open educational resources websites. Uh, second group is subject-specific repositories and aggregators. 
Uh, then we have content type specific repositories, uh, general and global repositories and aggregators and MOOCs. MOOCs uh, is a short from a massive open online courses. Uh, and this is uh, the brand new solution uh, in open resources uh, management. Uh, what are the examples of institutional repositories and uh, open education uh, resources websites? Well, as you see, such solutions uh, are widely uh, uh, used, for example, uh, by uh, Massachusetts Institutes of Technology Open Courseware in the University uh, of Nottingham, which is called uh, You Know. Then we have Open Spies. Um, distributed by University of uh, Oxford and Open Learn, um, uh, managed by Open University. And a group of specific um, subject repositories and aggregators, we can uh, point to uh, Humebach's uh, core materials or Criticos. And the content type specific repositories. Uh, uh, we have uh, widely known uh, solutions like Google Docs, YouTube, Flickr, or uh, Wikipedia uh, uh, Commons. And in uh, general and global repositories, uh, a good example uh, is Merlot and uh, Solvonauts and OER Commons. Thank you very much for uh, participation in this webinar. I hope you like it. Goodbye.